let's just get in this. Uh, the architecture of power, and we will discuss dictators, but we're going to discuss a few other things first. So let's set the goal. Let's set the tone here. Tonight's goal, we're going to talk about architecture in service of the state. The government surrounds you, legitimate and otherwise. In this case, you can draw your own conclusions about America today. Of fascism, seems pertinent today. Of the cult of one, there's, uh, there's Chuck Manson right there. Always a nice thing to see. The cult of one, how do you embody the needs of the one in power? Of the corporate, we live in sort of a post-nation state environment. So corporate power now has become something very important. So what do corporations want to tell us about what we're doing? The architecture of fear. People often want to control you, tell you how to think. Um, that's something you have to be aware of, be cognizant of. And we'll discuss what we learned at the end very briefly. But while we go on this, pr please, please, please drink heavily. Uh, tip your bartenders. I mean, we got to keep it moving here. So by all means, do as much damage to your livers as possible tonight. Cheers to that. Drink for me. Okay, some disclaimers, some parental advisory notes real quick. Uh, I am an adjunct professor. <laughs> I am not... A, um, a tenured professor, I'm not actually a researcher, so this will be a little lighter in facts than our last wonderful presentation. I am, however, an architect. Um, I'm a better architect than whoever this is, to be quite honest with you. I'm not really sure what that's about, but I'm not a sociologist. I'm not a scientist, so there will be some facts and some nonsense in this. Um, we will be discussing some adult themes today. Uh, dictators mean some bad people. So, I mean, we're not going to uh, sugarcoat some of this. So be aware there will be some adult themes. A few other caveats I wanted to add. This was loosely research. I'm a busy man. I did the best I could. So <laughs> I don't have all the dates sometimes. If you see me looking in here, there's notes. And also, there are very few photo credits, most of these from Google things. I try to credit people when I have time, otherwise I'm just slapdash, so if you see your photo, I apologize. Okay, why are architects the worst people alive? Besides all the things I just mentioned. We are bootlickers of the rich. I was raised working class, it drives me nuts to have to work for rich people, but that is the life I have chosen, unfortunately. This was actually me this morning. We will work for anyone. We really will. And that will come up as we're talking about it. Money does have no moral opinions. And we're all a little dead inside from years of whoring ourselves out. So <laughs> these are all things we're working against. So let's start about the state. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture of the state. So right here you have the U.S. Capitol building. Now we're going to set the theme here a little bit with that. So federal style architecture describes public architecture used in the U.S. from the 1780s to the 1950s. Uh, it was a conscious choice we made to tie our nation to the ancient democracies of Greece and the Republican values of Rome. This federal style is a balanced and symmetrical style with Roman architectural language. Uh, one of the more famous examples was the Capitol building, which was actually the result of a public competition in the 1790s. So this is the result of where your gridlock and non-laws happen now. Um, it's so iconic. In fact, we can get Lego architecture of this. Uh, as an architect, I am an architect because of Legos. That's why I have this career. Yep, Legos are great. Uh, this is why I chose my career. I've been playing with Legos since I was eight, and I want to be an architect since I was 12, and I got my wish. And you can see me here thinking heavily on the subject at the Art of the Brick in New York City. I'll talk a little bit about the plans here and what it means. So this is a floor plan of Credit Wikipedia, don't get, don't get used to seeing credits on the photos. Uh, this is a floor plan, the second floor, the main floor. And you can see like the symmetry very much measures classic Greek architecture. And it's a con again, a conscious decision to tie our young country back to the world's oldest democracies. Uh, also, you can see that they have equal weight to the House of Representatives and the Senate, giving them equal wings that are symmetrically balanced, with a great meaning placed in the, in, in the middle. Also, these colonnades, actually if you go back to a couple slides, show a level of scale rendering that makes it more accessible. So even though this is a very majestic large building, this scale helps you get a more human sense of things. Okay, and we were trying to tie it back to Greek architecture, I'll say. So this is an example of what it's basically based on. It's the Parthenon, and they were Acropolises. They were temples. Who here has been to Greece? Nice. I haven't been yet. Uh, I'd like to go. I'm going hopefully one day. Here's an example of the floor plan of the Parthenon. Now, part the Parthenon was not a public meeting place for laws. That happens somewhere else. But it was, however, a very interesting place. You can see that they have the low steps surrounding the building. 
They have a colonnade covering all sides to give it a sense of scale. They have dual entrances to the two things. And of course, the larger one is where they put the cult statue. <laughs> and the smaller one's where they kept their money. So you can see right there, the cult and the money. It was a very, very American thing to copy. We copied the right thing. Now, actually, the Greek theater is where they had most of their lectures, their public debates. That was actually the public forum for non-religious things, which is funny. We chose to copy the Parthenon because of its sort of large scale. It makes it kind of interesting. But that's was where they would have their debates, whereas now for us, the theater is where we just watch cursing puppets. It's a very different feeling. Uh, some other capitals are interesting. This is Brasilia, which was the product of a conscious design decision in the 1950s and 60s. Oscar Niemeyer, uh, Mr. Costa, they designed a city that was basically a utopian late modernist view. Um, it's been a, an Oresco uh, World Heritage Site since 1987, I believe. And what ended up happening is, you can see from the scale of it, it's very rigid. There's a great large, almost too large scale. So there's been some real problems with the scale of the city. But it has some, some modernist wonder pieces. This is um, Oscar Niemeyer's National Congress. Again, the two houses of Congress are kept in uh, sort of dialogues with the two different domes. So it's a very similar sort of formal thing they were trying to do. Uh, this is also a project in Germany. This is the rebuilding of the Reichstag to celebrate the reunification of Germany. This is a project by Lord, not Sir, Lord Norman Foster. And you can see this dome caps the rebuilding of the Reichstag. Speaking of Germany, we'll get to that in a minute. So fascism. Now these are what we call legitimate governments, and it pains me to say it might help mentioning that legitimate versus illegitimate is sort of how we view it. It's our perception. I'm not gonna lie about that. So one man's legitimate is one other man's illegitimate. So we should keep that in mind as I continue. Uh, fascism. It's a form of right-wing uh, authoritarian alternationalism. Sasha Baron Cohen, your dictators. You have forcible suppression of opposition. There's a strong regimentation of the society and economy. And liberal democracy is seen as obsolete. In other words, you need a strong man, someone to really keep things together. Reminds you of anybody. A totalitarian one-party state is necessary to prepare for conflict and economic difficulties. Uh, let's start with Italy, too. Um, this is a game, Access and Allies. Who played that as a kid? Anybody? Access and Allies? It's Nerd Night. A few? A high, school, uh, a high school nerd's lonely Friday night. You can see I played this a lot because I had very few chances of dates when I was a young man. <laughs> Italy, this is a very famous thing commissioned by Benito Mussolini. This is the Casa di Fascio, which is based on a classical uh, palace. You can see the regimentation. And a couple notes on the plan. So it has a large atrium that has a very static facade that allows for basically the outside to be married from the inside. It's a very private thing. But the key thing about this is by having the space almost be scaleless, whoops, sorry about that, you are actually allowing the signage, the, the cult of the dictator to take, um, to take on different views of how prominently you want to show it. Um, speaking of Germany, uh, who remembers the game Wolfenstein 3D, one of the first first person, a few more people, a few more people, Quake, Doom. Uh, this is my Saturday night, again, can't get dates, so Friday was earlier, this is Saturday. Um, lots of interesting fascist architecture from the Nazis. Um, Hitler's architect, Albert Speer, uh, designed the Cathedral of Light, which is, it's interesting because it is a, a rather wonderful piece of showmanship in service to a very bad person. And what happened is Speer uh, demanded that a lot of his events happen at night for two reasons, and I kid you not, these are great. One is to give ideas about how powerful light was as a presentation, how beautiful his lights were, and two, because a lot of the Nazis supposedly were overweight and he didn't want to see them individually. <laughs> I kid you not, it's on the internet, I read it. Um, <laughs> Hitler actually decided to get all the lights from the military, and the military balked and said, we need these for the military. He goes, you don't understand, this is disinformation. If they think we can use 152 lights for this, they won't screw with us, which is an interesting way of looking at it. Other uh, examples of Nazi architecture, the Ministry of Aviation, that's now um, a public building. Also, this is the Olympia Stadium in Berlin. Um, we, they uh, got the 1936 Olympics, and uh, Hitler wanted to use this as a piece of propaganda to show that his Aryan athletes uh, were superior to other people. Inner Jesse Owens, by the way. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful American, and uh, he did four events against the Germans, and he won four gold medals. So as you can see, that's what happened here. Hitler did not get his propaganda. 
But speaking of stadiums, they had this megalomania. This is a common theme with um, state buildings for people who are dictators, who are these, these evil people. They, scale matters. Spear designed the Dusha Stadium, which was, never un, which was never built, which is good, but it actually was supposed to sit 400,000 people. And, and so to compare this, it would have been four of Michigan's big house. And by the way, the Nazis also would have won the Big Ten, so they both would have lost the Big Ten. But this is going to be four Michigan big houses. Now, the weird thing is also they tried to plan a large-scale replacement um, capital for Berlin called Germania, and Spear designed a master plan. And can I ask you to play the video here, please, briefly? Please ignore the music. Dominated by the Great Hall, where 150,000 people could meet, it would be the largest building in the world. Tiny by comparison, the old Reichstag, the high command of the Wehrmacht. It's very scary music. The Führer's palace would be much larger than the new Reich Chancellery. This almost happened. Delegations from subjugated peoples would come once a year to see and marvel. The note about the subjugated nation, someone caught that. It's pretty horrible stuff. 1950. But they didn't get it done in 1950 because um, something else happened, as we all are aware, um, which is good. Thank you for that, by the way. There's one more video we'll play in a bit. Thank you. Uh, we might need a palate cleanser after that. No one wants to talk about Nazis and fascists and not have a palate cleanser. So I suggest a picture of uh, Captain America <laughs> beating up Hitler. There was a big, uh, and it seems really timely now. You've got the guys. This is uh, obviously a worker at uh, Staples with a torch. It's very strange. Nazis are un unfortunately somewhat in vogue right now. Uh, and there's this argument whether you should be able to punch a Nazi. And just in case you're wondering, I, I am very pro-punching Nazis. That's Richard Spencer. If you don't know who he is, good. He is a white nationalist, and frankly, I could watch this for hours, but we have a time limit. Um, now, one more time, right? Just one more. There we go. Perfect. Okay. The cult of one. Now, fascism is usually in service to a larger group of people in control, but a cult of one deals with one person. You'll see the strong man. You'll have um, Chavez. You'll see the perpetual um, revolution of Fidel Castro. You'll even see our current uh, leader's boss, his, his employer, uh, Vladimir Putin, just showing what a just manly guy he is, which, I mean, it's kind of hot, to be honest with you. Um, but real power is bending the will to your, to your needs. Um, guys like Benito Mussolini, I, I, when I design things, I have to worry about zoning or client's budget. He doesn't have to worry about things. He says, how many stores? Six. Six stories. Why? Six letters in my first name. How many colonnades? Nine. Why? It explains itself. I mean, really, like... The Palace of the Soviets, this was unbuilt as well. Stalin wanted a thing that would commemorate Lenin's death. So a, and a lot of architects got in this. This is back to my point about architects being horrible people. Joe Stalin, who's known for killing millions of people, said, let's build something. So Corbu, Walter Gropius are all like, yeah, I'll apply, because again, money's green, right? Just horrible, horrible stuff. And the winning competition was a massive tower that had like a 100-foot tall statue of Vladimir Lenin at the top. This was never built, by the way, which is probably a good thing. But look how big, look at the size of the people. Look how big Lenin is. Now, also, there are some remnants of sort of more younger dictators. This is a small country, Albania. Anybody been to Albania before? Albania is a wonderful place. I got one here, right? Albania is a wonderful place. It was ra uh, had a dictator, for the same dictator for 40 years, a guy named Hosha. And uh, they know how to treat people in power right. In fact, when an American president went there, he got a statue literally for getting off a plane. That's, that is W. He got a statue and a street for just getting off a plane. I mean, it's kind of an insane thing. But if you rule the same country 40 years, you become paranoid. So Hocha commissioned 170,000 bunkers in a country of 3 million people. Or excuse me, 3 or 6. Uh, Toronto's 3 million, sorry. Less than 10. Let's just go there. But the point being is 170,000 bunkers to fight an invasion. How many times was Albania invaded? Yeah. Waste of money, though. And because of the legacy of wasting that money, they still are racked with poverty. But, I mean, the great thing about being a dictator is you can actually have the state hire your daughter, who is an architect, to build a lasting memento of your entire rule. This is the Tirana Pyramid 
which is now kind of um, in bad shape. You can see this person playing outside the decrepit ruins. Um, so North Korea is not getting out of here unscathed. If you remember, I mean, they've got some pretty weird leaders. You've got Kim Jong-il, who's deceased. You remember Team America World Police, a wonderful movie. And, of course, then you have Kim Jong-un with future Secretary of State Dennis Rodman. These are two very powerful leaders. And they're not slouches. They know how to get their names on things, their pictures. And even they have these Walmart greeter-like statues. And you see, again, see the scale. The scale is very important in all fascist architecture. Not just the embodiment of the person, but the scale. Uh, the May Day Stadium, this is where the national soccer team plays. And how big is it? It's the biggest damn stadium in the world. Again, bigger than the big house in Michigan. 114,000 people to watch their soccer games, which I'm sure aren't very good because they probably can't eat. Now, the corporate. We live in a post-nation post, um, post state environment, so the corporations are important. One way they emphasize this is with naming rights. So usually professional sports stadiums are usually owned by us, but they are paid for by us, but the money goes to some private individual. So you might notice, for example, the naming rights for the Barclays Center or City Field. How much did those get? 400 million over 20 years. How much of it did you guys see? None. You see none. The Amazon deal. Who has an opinion about the Amazon deal? Who's pro? Who's con? I actually was kind of looking forward to having the seven train go prime just so I could make one on day delivery. <laughs> but um, some people thought it was a good idea. There's Mr. Como. Some people thought it was, yeah, you can all boo, it's fine. Some people think it's a bad idea, but what's interesting from an architecture point of view is the site they chose. Now, this is in Long Island City. This is uh, Vernon Boulevard, and this is the zoning page from the same site I pulled, um, and you can see it's all manufacturing districts, which doesn't allow for residential use, but they decided instead to allow the state to rezone it without any of our consent. Uh, usually, planning decisions are made by city and our elected officials, and Como has decided to give Amazon carte blanche to rebuild entire areas of uh, Laura, Laura City without our say, which is kind of insane. Kind of didn't, glad it didn't happen. We'll touch a little bit on fear. So uh, this is Memento Park in Hungary. Uh, Hungary is a former satellite state of the Soviet Union. So they took all of their sort of Soviet level things and uh, put them in a park 30 minutes outside the city. I was there a few years ago. So they still give them a place to see them, just nowhere near a place that's important. It's actually a very nice park. It's very beautiful. There's birds. It's a great time. Um, I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Who knows who this is? Very bad person, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Not that Forrest, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Very bad man, found in the Klan. And that statue literally has been in my town my entire life. Uh, there were protests, however, and last year they finally got rid of it. Um, the statues we choose, exactly, the statues we choose to put up tell a lot about what we want to tell our citizens, what to be scared of. All of these Confederate statues went up in the 1920s or so. And the reason was to let people know that even though we had civil rights, they were going backwards. They were, going, they were trying to subjugate people again. So that's why these things went up at the time they did. Berlin Wall, obviously trying to scare people from mingling. Now, some people want you to be scared now. I might not be named. Some people want you to be frightened. Frightened of people around you. Frightened of immigrants. Frightened of people who take your jobs. It's just not something to be scared of. Usually, despots build things out of scale. They build things that don't respect their surroundings. They put their names on things. They don't have any idea of how to play nice with other buildings. I mean, it doesn't remind you of anyone. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned you should stay away from your surroundings. People like me are trying to tell you something. We're hired to, so listen to what we're saying, or don't. That's up to you. Uh, be skeptical of the messages the built environment is trying to give you. If I or another architect is building something, there's something we are trying to tell you. Be skeptical. Don't take our words at face value. We, again, are the worst people in the world. Please don't <laughs> believe us. And drink heavily. Uh, again, back to that. That's just something you else have to do. And with that, I will take your questions. Go to nerdnight.com to find a Nerd Night event near you. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for our latest presentation.